Okay, hello and welcome back to our PML school. Uh, thanks for your continued interest. I'm glad I, I can see so many people uh, are joining this webinar. Uh, today we have our first session in 2017, and as you may know, there will be another 13th session to come throughout this year. So I hope you keep up with your interest in this series. Our topic for today is enterohepatic recirculation. Uh, this is a physiological process by which the drug is transferred uh, uh, from the liver to the gallbladder and then later from the gallbladder to the gut where it can be reabsorbed into the blood. Um, so what we want to achieve today is to develop, to develop a model that mimics this physiological process. Uh, you might think that this is a too com complex model for a sort of beginner school like the PML school, but uh, here I would disagree. Given what we've learned over the first six sessions, we should be confident in accepting this as a challenge. We have learned how to develop the model in a stepwise fashion. So we usually start by choosing built-in options, then we modify the model using the graphical model builder, and eventually uh, we fine-tune our model by adjusting the textual code. Uh, we've also learned how we can use model equations that we get from the literature, some references there, and put them into the code. All of these steps we can now apply to the enterohepatic model. It is just the same as you will see when we go through, the, through this with, uh, in the webinar. But before moving on, um, I, would, uh, I would recommend uh, please use the Q&A panel on the right-hand side of the WebEx console to ask questions or to post comments. Um, we will deal with this uh, at the end of the, um, when, we, when, we, uh, when I'm ending with the presentation and we come to that and, and pick those up and get some responses for you. So um, what's the objective of today's webinar? We want to model enterohepatic recirculation after intravenous administration. Uh, and with the final model that we built, we seek to get estimates for an, uh, a number of parameters, but that's not a lot, uh, not a high number. Still a very rather a simple model. So uh, we are familiar with the, let me get a, a second pointer. Um, we want to find estimates for the typical, the first, first four are unknown. These are from a standard uh, two compartmental model, clearances and volumes for the central and the peripheral volume. But the other three, these are actually uh, for the um, for the um, uh, enterohepatic recirculation. So whenever uh, the drug uh, is excreted from the gallbladder into the gut, it, it needs to be reabsorbed through the gut wall, and this is uh, related with the absorption rate constant Ka that we know from uh, extravascular uh, models. Then we need to uh, get an estimate for a bile excretion rate constant, and uh, uh, for the zero-order process of um, releasing the um, drug in, into the gut, we need a, a duration, a bile emptying interval. So these are the parameters that uh, we want to uh, find estimates for. And then uh, here's the problem specification. So we have one subject that received an intravenous bolus dose of 5,617.3 micrograms. And we've uh, collected plasma concentrations over a period of 36 hours. Um, as usual, uh, we start with an exploratory data analysis. So uh, you see here the similar plot of con concentration versus time. And what's um, typical of a enterohepatic recirculation uh, type of uh, process is this multiple peak occurring. So we got here the uh, decrease from the intravenous bol bol bolus dose. And then after a certain certain time, we can see an, another increase and in a new peak uh, appearing in the curve. Since the drug was 
administered uh, intravenously, you can exclude formulation or absorption specific factors, factors so that we can really conclude this is highly likely uh, due to enterohepatic recirculation that we see this uh, secondary peak. But let's have a closer look at the curve, what we can get out of this. Um, uh, in the first part, you see here and there, there are two slopes after the intravenous uh, dose. So we can anticipate um, this could be modeled by a two compartmental model. Uh, but here the concentration increases. So this is, uh, if we say this is enterohepatic recycling, um, this is due to gallbladder emptying and uh, the uh, drug is getting absorbed from the gut until it's, it's, it's uh, empty or it, it stops excreting into the gut. And then the, the um, uh, drug concentration decreases once again and much in the same, with the same slope as the second slope from the beginning. So the, we can take extract from here that the um, gallbladder emptying hap is happening 10 hours past dose and uh, the interval is roughly three hours. So th these are um, uh, um, uh, values we can take as, as initial estimates. So we've already covered some good initial thoughts for that. So um, now, as we usually do, we uh, develop our m model in a stepwise fashion. We start from built-in and then go into graphical mode. Um, what we said, we start with um, two compartment, standard two compartmental model. Uh, first of all, we need to uncheck the population box. We stick to, to, uh, to the PK type of model. And we also keep the clearance as a parameterization and intravenous as the absorption. Uh, and we just have to increase the number of compartments from one to two. We usually uncheck the closed form because we want to deal with differential equations. What we do here right away is to change the residual error model. This is by default on additive model, but you know since we are having a range of uh, more than three lock units, it's um, appropriate to switch this to a multiplicative residual error model right away. And we give it a standard deviation of 0.2 which means 20% CV. This is all what we can set in the built-in options. And here you see already the statements. And now we can switch to the graphical mode where we see this kind of uh, picture. This is our graphical model. This is just a uh, the same re uh, 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 an alternative representation of the built-in options. Now what is needed is to add compartments and flows for the uh, gallbladder or the bile and, and, and the gut through the graphical model builder. That is shown here. So we start from our standard two compartmental model. Now what we've done here is uh, we moved this uh, C2, this peripheral compartment on the left hand side, but apart from that everything stays the same other than just a few renaming of the concentrations and the volumes. So this stays the same more or less. We've just added two other compartments. First of all, the, the um, transfer of amounts of the drug from the central compartment to the gallbladder, what we call A bile, which is governed by the uh, rate constant K1G. Then it stays there um, for, for some time and eventually you know, it gets emptied through a a gallbladder release uh, um, a constant into the gut. This is, a gut is much like an absorption compartment and then this feeds back into the central compartment through an uh, absorption rate constant Ka. So this is uh, the whole physiological process that we built with, with this picture. Um, but uh, what is missing is the event where where the gallbladder is emptying. And this is a discrete time-based event where the model should, um, should do something different when it should switch on the enterohepatic recycling path. And this cannot be inserted uh, through the graphical model builder. 
So we need to switch um, uh, into textual mode to enter the um, so this, is this specific event. Okay, let's go to this. And um, before we do that, um, we can check uh, the model equations. These are from the literature, like from the Gabrielson and Weiner uh, um, book. In the first equation, you see this is a typical standard um, two compartmental uh, uh, model that we see here. We've got the input that is an uh, uh, intravenous bolus dose, and we receive some additional inputs through this uh, enterohepatic re uh, recirculation, that is the Ka minus A gut. Then we lose some concentration through typical um, clearance. And also, we've got some exchange with the peripheral compartment. And this is uh, just the loss of uh, amount of drug from the central compartment to the, to the gallbladder. This is the first equation. And uh, you will see this uh, equation later on in the, in the PML code. And the same for the uh, peripheral compartment, CT. We've got some exchange with the central compartment through these clearances. And then for the um, for the uh, uh, amount in the gallbladder, um, we've got the um, input from the central compartment through rate constant K1G. And here, um, the zero order release is defined by the amount in the bile, right? Um, and uh, that is divided by the duration the, the, uh, of, of the emptying. So this is the emptying um, interval. And it's uh, similar in, in the gut. The amount in the gut is described by the, uh, the um, release of um, the zero order release from, from the bile minus the loss. I mean, that is transferred into the gut and then reabsorbed uh, into, this, into the blood, into the central compartment. So um, what this assumes is um, that um, bile excretion is only happening once within the 36-hour period. Uh, we have to adapt our model to include this singular e event, and this can only be done, as I said, in the textual mode. So this is now the textual code. Here's the final code. Uh, the first line um, states, I mean, we just introduce a new variable called switch that we need later on in, in when we define, you know, the switching on or off of the enterohepatic recycling. And then we come to the structural model. And this we've seen uh, uh, a few times already in the previous sessions. Here's a differential equation uh, for the um, for the central compartment, and this looks much the same as here in these equations. It's just um, you can uh, see it's, it's um, almost the same. Uh, it's just in, within the derivative statement, you just put in uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, particular um, equation. But this is actually everything of you know of the structure everything that you see in the structural model is actually coming from the graphical model so you don't need to take care of this this is being done by the uh, by, by the phoenix model object itself what we do here in this statement this is a, a differential equation for the amount in the gallbladder we just switch the gallbladder release uh, with rate and we specify rate here as a uh, as, as a value that is a um, switch function divided by the tau, the duration of the gallbladder emptying interval. This is the only change from the graphical modeler that we put in place in this structural model. Otherwise, this all comes from the graphical model as we build it up. And you will see that later on in the demo. We also need uh, one parameter Ri, and this is the time when this recirculation occurs, occurs, and that's what we've seen from the exploratory analysis is after 10 hours. This is directly taken from the plot of the data. Um, so then, and this is something new. Um, we, 
we, we introduced something that, that that's called like a sequence block in PML. And this is a new feature that we have not seen before in our PML school. Uh, the sequence block allows us to put some statements between those curly brackets that you see here and there that are executed at discrete points in time. This is different from all the other statements like in the structural model or in, in the parameter block. Uh, um, th those statements do apply all the time wherever these statements within the curly brackets are only executed at discrete time points. Also, this, also the statements within the sequence blocks, you know, within the statement, statement, uh, state, uh, sequence block, is executed one after the other, so in a sequential manner. First this, then this, and so forth. So this is also different from the statements outside this block. And you can insert some conditional statements like while or if loops in order to really define discrete time-based points, time-based events. And that is exactly what we need for the enterohepatic recycling. And from ex the exploratory analysis, we learned that the gallbladder empties after 10 hours after the dosing event. So what we say, uh, the sequence starts, we switch the enterohepatic recycling to zero, to off, off mode. Then we sleep. We don't do anything for RI time units. That is 10, 10 time units, 10 hours. And after that, we switch the um, uh, enterohepatic cycling on. And that means the rate, which is defined by switch divided by tau, becomes active. So one divided by tau. And this is being uh, done then for tau time units. And tau, we estimate as a time interval for the gallbladder emptying of as, as, as three hours. And after this, this tau, um, uh, we switch this uh, release, the gallbladder emptying off again. And then the sequence stops, right? So let me, uh, I'm, I'm going through the uh, model once again. Um, it's a graphical model once again, but this is uh, how the code is built. What we need to um, understand is this new feature, the sequence block, which um, allows you to execute statements at discrete time points and in a sequential manner. And it's, easy, it, it's as easy as this, switch e, e, uh, the enterohepatic cycling off, sleep for a while, switch it on, sleep for a while, and switch it off again. Done. All the rest we know about these structural parameters, you know, these are also coming directly from the graphical model, structural parameters for volumes, clearances, and, the, and so forth. Obviously, because we simplified this expression here, we don't need the standard structural parameter for the gallbladder release. Need to delete this. Um, and here you know about the fixed effects um, uh, part where this is, comes with a um, uh, on a vec as, a, as a vector with a lower bound, the initial estimate and the upper bound that it defined here. And also for the gallbladder release, we don't need either, so we can delete this. So this is our model for the enterohepatic recycling. It is, it's not a more, way more complex as, as, um, as what we've done before with our, our models. It's just introducing this sequence block. Otherwise, most of the other things are really something we, we did before. Okay, let's go on to this here. Um, so um, we need some initial estimates. You know, we've got uh, here the initial estimates in the, in the textual model. Um, so you've seen already some of those, like tau and um, uh, some, some other values for which we typically run in NCA, like clearance, volume, and the um, exchange with the peripheral compartment and so forth. Uh, with the absorption rate constant, we typically start with the value of one, and the same we do with K1G, and tau is the gallbladder emptying interval, which is three hours we've got from the plot. Um, so this is um, 
the initial estimates, and I guess with that we can start with a demo. So I'll just share my Phoenix. All right, here we are in, in Phoenix. This is um, uh, the data that we have. So we've got only one uh, profile. Um, here's the um, time uh, points and the concentrations. And here's the plot. This is the same as we saw on the slides. Uh, right, and the first thing we do is typically to run an NCA on this in order to get um, some initial estimates. So we need to set the time and the uh, concentration. Uh, the dose was 5617.3 at time zero. It was an intravenous bolus dose in micrograms. Right. And then we just give it a go and uh, get to those in a second, those values. So for clearance, we've got something about five volume, 32 um, uh, volume, steady state, 48, and so forth. All of this combined, you get uh, then to the initial estimates. So what we said we do, we start with the built-in options. So we send our data to a Phoenix model, right? Let's, let's build in. And here uh, we, as I said, we uncheck the population box. We stick to PK, stick to clearance, intravenous stays the same. The number of compartments we set to two. We uncheck the closed form and we change from additive to multiplicative residual error model, and we need to reduce standard deviation to 0.2, meaning 20% CV. That's all from the built-in options. We just need to map the concentration here. Time is time, CP is COPS. Dosing, we put in a um, internal worksheet. 5.617.3 at time zero, and here is our model. Much like as what we've seen um, in, on the slides. So this is our built-in model. I just make a copy and paste it back to the workflow. And this will be our graphical model. So uh, much the same, everything stays the same. So we go here and switch on the right-hand side, just add it as graphical. Okay, and now we can do it a little bit more like this. So we can move this on the left-hand side, and we say this is our VT and CT, as we said, and CL is CLD. And now we just introduce another um, peripheral compartment. Okay. And this will be our a vial. We don't have a concentration and we don't have a dose point, but we need a flow from the central to the a vial compartment. And this is just a one-way flow. And we said this is K1G. This is how we do it. Right. right. And now we enter another um, compartment peripheral here. And that is our A gut. It's not a concentration, no dose point. And we said we would add a flow from here to there. Uh, and that what we called GBR, right? Okay. And then we need to add another flow uh, from the gut to the central compartment. 
and this is our rate uh, absorption rate constant ka that's that's everything we need this is our enterohepatic um recycling model built uh, with a graphical model builder what we said now what we need to add is uh the time uh, uh, discrete time based event that's happening between these these two two compartments and what i said there we actually need a need to enter uh, some some text into the textual code so we just copy this and paste it back and say this is our textual model okay and here we just need to add it as texture add it model as texture here you see the code already it's much the same as what we've seen before right so uh, what we said is uh, we want to enter a new um, uh, variable that we call switch to enable this uh, switching on and off of the enterohepatic recycling process and we said we just wanted to rename this as rate right and you see most of the stuff is already built into from the graphical model you don't need to do anything here but um, here we start with we set the interval between uh, the dose point and the gallbladder emptying is 10 hours so ri, RI is 10 and rate equals a switch divided by tau and uh, then we start with our sequence function and oops. okay and the sequence function starts with um switch uh, equals I, I need to just close this one in order to get rid of the um Uh, wait a second. Yeah. Switch function um, equals zero. Right. This is the first step. We just uh, switch uh, the uh, gallbladder emptying off. Then we sleep. This is just a sleep statement where you just um, tell the uh, algorithm how long it shall do nothing, and that is sleep for ten hours then uh, switch equals one switch it on then sleep uh, for tau this is um, the gallbladder interval and then uh, switch off again switch equals zero and that closes the sequence block it's as simple as this okay so we see um, we've got need to get rid of this one we don't need that and this but what we need to have is a fix a fixed effect for tau and that equals C comma something like this Oh, where do we have GBR? Here. All right. You see, this is very uh, useful to have this warning message so you don't forget. So this is then the textual model that we built. And now we can um, put in these um, uh, estimates, which are Whatever this was, uh, what was it? Typical volume. Let me see. I need to just 
go to the prep one because I forgot about these. Let me do this and go to this model and just look. 13.1.355. Okay, let's go to this one. 13. You know, we, we don't need to be um, um, too close to those. 3510, 10, 1.2, and this, this should be okay. And we just give it a go. These are, these are the initial estimates that we apply to the textual code. Can do the fit. And here we look at the plot. Maybe you should pop it out in order to adjust to the semi log scale. Maybe you also want to have a little bit wider view. Right. So a nice fit. So this is really um, a very nice fit of the data. It really matches, you know, uh, the gallbladder emptying, the increase of the concentration. And the terminal slope of the of the curve. So here are the sitter table all the final estimates for the individual parameters that we've put up, and you see most of them are pretty sharp, uh, but all of them um, near or close to 30 percent at the most, but some are a little bit sharper. So this is a really nice result. And this is really, it's a simplified model for the, for the enterohepatic recycling um, scenario, but it, it shows you um, how, to, how to deal with, with these kind of challenges. And it's not, not too, um, too difficult. So let me stop this sharing, go back to the, to the slides. Um, this is a result, as I showed. A uh, very nice fit of the curve and very sharp estimates for the uh, PK parameters that we've got in the code. With that, I'm uh, just summarizing what we did. We actually developed a model for enterohepatic recirculation, which is kind of a complex model because we are really trying to mimic a physiological process. We started with a standard two-compartment model that was easy and just added through the graphical model builder two compartments and their flows for the bile and the gut. And then we inserted a very short and simple sequence block in order to code up the discrete time-based event for the gallbladder emptying. And then we just switched on uh, the cycling on or off. Finally, we were able to fit the model and examine the results. So that's everything for today's um, presentation. I guess we are now ready for the Q&A, and I will hand over to, um, to Chris Mill. Uh, now it's your turn, Chris, please. Thanks, Burns. Uh, we had some good questions uh, coming in from the, the audience. <clears throat> uh, the first uh, question, as, uh, can you explain a little bit more about the double switch statement? What, what does double mean? Uh, double, you know, this is uh, when you specify uh, a number in, in, a, in some code, some modeling code. It's, it's just a, a double precision floating point variable, which means uh, it has a precision of, it's, def, it's, it's coded with eight bytes, 64 bits, and that is the precision for this uh, for this uh, variable, then it's it's just an introduction of a of a variable that we, we will that we are using then in a sequence statement. Okay. Next question. Um, so you made some custom parameter names in the graphical model. Um, can you explain a little bit about the uh, the, the reasoning for naming uh, C two to C sub t, and yeah. also talk about whether uh, the parameters are case sensitive. Yes. Uh, first of all, all the parameters are case sensitive. So when you have C 
uh, capital C, lowercase t. This is really different than capital C, capital T, or lowercase c, lowercase t. So this is important. But CT is just um, um, the concentration in the tissue, right? You could also name it CP, but this is the same shortcut as is used for plasma concentration, CP uh, concentration plasma. So we typically call it CT or VT for to um, uh, denote the tissue part of, you know, it's it's just a sort of physiological meaning, getting a little bit of physiological meaning behind those uh, those namings and shortcuts. Great. Um, we have several people asking this question. Uh, so in the model, in the text model, the, the RI, the uh, gallbladder um, emptying, um, is declared as a variable there. Could that be um, set as a estimated parameter? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a very good uh, good point. Yes, it could be um, added as, a, as an estimated parameter. In this case, like I, I put it in here, it's a constant. So it doesn't change, right? And, um, you know, we we are trying to simplify the model as much as possible. And the the more parameter you add to model, you know, the more um, uh, difficult it could be. Oh no, the, the, the easier it is for the for the um, uh, for the algorithm to find find a good fit. Um, in this case, since we looked at the plot, and it, it really appeared that this is a sharp 10 hour uh, when the gallbladder empties, and therefore we put it here as a constant. But if you want, you can um, use this one as well as a, as a fixed effect and let the program, the algorithm, estimate the best f value for this. It's just here in this case, we wanted to keep it as simple as possible and therefore we fixed it to a value of 10. Great, and a, uh, a related follow-up question. Um, what if you wanted to set the, um, the um, gallbladder emptying uh, to occur repetitively, say every 24 hours? Yes, um, this is actually, yeah. yeah. You know, we have a very simple scenario where the gallbladder, over a 36-hour time point, time, time range, it only empties once, right? And you would expect um, from the physiology that it would uh, empty after each food uptake, after each meal, maybe three times or four times a day. And that typically happens, you know, in a more rhythm, uh, you know, circadian way, circadian, circadian rhythm way. So you want to set it um, up maybe with a trigonometrical function like sine or cosine. And that is uh, becoming more complex if you think about it. Um, this, 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 everything uh, could be coded up here in PML. It just adds to the complexity of the model because uh, when, these, when you model these, these gallbladder emptings, these multiple gallbladder emptings in this circadian rhythm way, you know, they, they are happening independent of the dosing interval. And then you have to align the dosing intervals with these uh, um, uh, circadian intervals of, of, of the gallbladder emptying, which is another thing. And then you, at, at some point in time, you also want to introduce the clock time because uh, typically meals are taken maybe in the morning and uh, lunchtime and dinner and so forth. So you want to introduce some some clock time, and this also needs to relate back to the dosing time, right? When do, do you apply the dose? So you see, um, the more you think about the real, real life scenarios, uh, the more complex it gets. And every time you have to assume something, if you model, want to model this, you have to assume something. So for example, if you think it, you know, in, 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 this, uh, in, in all these rhythms, it's, it's very difficult to find the real life scenario for that. So um, that's why it's it's um, at this point you know it's it's we keep it as simple as possible to give you just an idea of what you can do with the PML uh, features like the sequence block, right? Uh, if you have um, some something else you want to code up, it's, it, it sh you should be more familiar with this function now. And 
Um, but, uh, you know, uh, I've worked with one of our uh, trainers, Serge Guzzi, on this more complex model, which introduces all of these kind of features. And uh, this is part of our um, advanced tra training course in, in LLME. So if somebody's interested, this is, uh, um, this is being, uh, uh, you know, trained in, in, in one of those courses because it's already um, more advanced stuff, and we are really at the beginners in a, uh, at a beginners level where we just want to learn about the features like sequence in this case as in, a, in a very simple uh, scenario. Okay, great. We have, we have time for a, a couple more questions. Um, so, you have, in the fixed effect statements. Um, can you describe a little bit about the initial estimate? So it's it's taking three entries here. Um, what are the th the three entries uh, separated by the commas? Yes, here uh, this is given here in the code uh, in, uh, as a as a comment in the code. The fixed effect comes in a, in a vector representation where you have three. Uh, numbers in this vector. The first one, which is typically, we don't uh, use lower bounds and upper bounds. We leave empty, so we don't give any boundaries for for the uh, for the algorithm. And the initial, the, the middle value that is shown here between the commas is actually the initial estimate that the algorithm takes as a starting point when it tries to to uh, um, maximize the likelihood, uh, uh, likelihood function and, and try to minimize, uh, you know, to, to improve the fit to the data. So this is just the starting point for the minimizer, and then it, it tries to uh, get as close as possible to the, to the actual data points. Great, and uh, and we had several people ask this next next question. Um, what would you do differently if the administered dose was oral instead of IV? Yeah, this is something. That's a good question. Um, obviously, um, you wouldn't have this um, this first statement. You would have uh, this as a typical extravascular. Uh, um, uh, differential equation, so it would be an AA statement uh, where you have uh, some some uh, the same absorption rate constant, right? Like we have here, but this is coming then with an um, extravascular bolus, right? So you've got first of so you've got two entries for those. You've got the AA times KA as an input to the uh, to the amount in the central compartment plus the one from that is excreted from the gallbladder into the gut, right? Yeah, and, and then this can be done uh, from the starting point when you're doing the built-in graphical, uh, sorry, the built-in model or in graphical mode, you can simply um, set the input to extravascular instead of intravenous. Yes, I would start from the built-in options where you just, you know, we started with the intravenous, so if you have an extravascular, you switch it uh, to extravascular here and go, for, uh, go through the same, very same steps when you then go to the graphical model builder and so forth. You would then ha just have another absorption compartment sticking out here with the flow, and which has the same uh, absorption rate constant as the one you shown here just an additional absorption compartment in this graphical model. And then the same, you switch to the textual code and then uh, apply the sequence uh, block, uh, inserting RI rate and so forth, and uh, adapt the code like we did uh, in this demo. Excellent. Well, well, thanks, Bernd. Um, we, we do have um, some questions. I, I, I do want to add that um, all of the, uh, the transcript from the Q&A session, uh, questions that were asked during the webinar, as well as Bernd's slides and the recorded webinar uh, and the text model will all be posted at the forum on Sotera.com. All right, yeah, thanks, thanks Chris, um, for the Q&A. Um, before we end, um, I would like just to um, make you aware of, of the, uh, two sessions that are running uh, in due course. So we have a webinar from our development group, from Fred Saltenschai, Michael Tomaszewski, and Serge Guzzi, on uh, uh, some new functions that were um, uh, implemented for our NLME module, you know, the population version of the Phoenix model. Um, and typically what you see here 
when you are running a large data set that the um, computation time increases quite a bit and in what they have implemented for the current version for the recently new released version phoenix 7.0 and nlme 7.0 is is a way to um, parallelize their jobs by uh, assessing grid grids uh, so compute grids where you can j just send off your calculation and you get uh, a high gain in, in speed and in performance um, by distributing your job over a grid. And they also show some very interesting tips and tricks around how to set up these, these models and how to run those. So if you're interested, this webinar takes place next week on January, January 25th at 11 a.m. EST. And um, the, the very next session of our um, PML school is two, in two weeks' time, typically on a biweekly schedule. Uh, Chris Mail will actually present on a one compartment first and zero order input. So here, this will deal with um, absorb different absorption models and where you have to fit and discriminate between those uh, options that are available in, in, in Phoenix and the Phoenix model. With that, I uh, want to close the session. I'm uh, again thank you for your interest and um, hope you, I see you soon and um, uh, in the next session. And um, uh, please, uh, if you've got some comments or feedback, uh, as Chris mentioned, we are um, making available our material on the Satara forum. Please post some comments there if you want, and uh, we will respond to those. Okay, goodbye, and uh, hope uh, to see you again in two weeks' time. Thanks, and uh, you may disconnect now.